Hey, welcome back to InfoGamer. Today, I have a different type of lesson planned. For this video, I'm going to be showing you how to adapt a game that is primarily built for mobile platforms over to other platforms that might not support some of the features that you have implemented in your game for a mobile platform. So here I have my Snake Cube project open inside of Unity. And when I was initially creating Snake Cube, I designed it for mobile platforms such as Android and iOS. But what I'd like to do now is create a WebGL build of Snake Cube and put it up on our website. And this way, anybody can play it without having to download it onto their phones. Now, before we get started, I would like to let you know that you can download Snake Cube for free on both Android and iOS. So make sure that you show your support by downloading Snake Cube and sharing it with all your friends. You can find links to where you can download Snake Cube on both Android and iOS in the description below this video. But now let's get started with the lesson. Now I've already gone through the trouble to switch platforms over to WebGL you'll now notice that I'm receiving a whole bunch of errors in my console window. And this is because there's certain features that I implemented into my project that are only supported on mobile platforms, such as ads and the in-app store. And so the first thing that we want to do is fix all of these errors. And there's a really easy way to fix these errors so that you can switch back and forth between the different platforms without it throwing any errors. So let's fix the first error message by double clicking on it in the console window. This will take us to where this error is occurring in our scripts. So here you can see that we're now in the my service script and we're receiving the error right here where it says game services. Now in the script, I've implemented the voxel Buster native plugin, which is only supported on mobile platforms. And really this whole script is based around mobile platforms. And so what we want to do is create a mobile specific region, which will comment out all of the code of the script if we're not on a mobile platform. To do this, we want to create an if region and we do this by typing pound and then if. We then want to specify the Unity Android platform and we do this by typing Unity underscore Android in all caps. We then want to add in two vertical bars for an or condition. And then we want to add in the Unity iOS platform by typing Unity underscore iOS in all caps. Now it's really important that you add this in after any variables that you have in your script. You don't want to include the variables in this region because that will comment out the variables. And if you have any values that are saved in your variables, those values will then be erased when you've switched to a platform that does not support this region. After this, we then want to scroll down to the bottom of our script and we want to add in pound and if. This will end up closing our if region. After this, we can then save our script and go back to Unity. Now you can see that we're actually receiving more errors and that's because by removing some of our code, we end up breaking other parts of our code. And we just need to continue going through this method until all our error messages are removed. And so I'm gonna to go to the next error message and we can actually go back and copy this if region and then we'll go back to where we're receiving this error message. And then we can paste in this region above where we're receiving the error. And we can then close the region after the error. And then going to do it for this error here. Now I'm not commenting out all of this script because there might be certain parts of this code that we still need for our game. And so I'm only commenting out the parts that are relevant to our mobile platforms. And so all we have to do to fix these errors is to repeat these same steps. And so I'll find the error. I'll then add in the if region for the mobile platforms. I'll then make sure that I close that if region and then I'll save my scripts and I'll go on to the next error message. And so real quick, I'm just gonna breeze through all of the error messages so that we can get this game working for WebGL. All right, so there we go. I no longer have any more error messages in my console window. And so now I'm going to test my project and see if it's working. And there we go. It looks like everything's working properly. Now, the next thing that we need to do once we have all the error messages fixed is set up our scenes so that the features that are only supported on mobile platforms are no longer visible. And to do this, we're actually going to use a custom inspector and editor script that I've created. And so here you can see I have this script called Platform Helper. And I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio to show you how it works. I also have another script, which is in my editor folder, which is called Platform Helper Editor. And I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio. So inside the script, I have the using Unity Editor namespace. And this script basically adds a button to our Platform Helper script. And when the button is then pressed, we'll then execute this function here called set objects. So let's go over to our Platform Helper script. Inside this script, we have a list of game objects, which is called supported objects. And then inside our set objects function, 
a for loop through each of the objects in our list. And if we have a mobile platform selected, we then enable all of the objects in our list. And if we don't have a mobile platform selected, then we disable all of the objects in our list. And so now that you know how this platform helper script works, let's go back to Unity. Inside Unity, we need to create a new empty game object, which I've called platform helper. And then we want to drag on our platform helper script. Here you can see we have our list of game objects variable, and we have a button that says set supported objects. Now what I need to do from here is populate my supported objects list. And so I'm going to go through all of the objects in my hierarchy, and if there's an object that should only be visible on a mobile platform, I'm going to then drag it into this list. And so for example, we have these two displays. One is for how much food our player has earned, and the other is for how many coins our player has earned. And so I'm going to select both of these display objects and drag them into our supported objects list. From here, I can then click the button, and since I have the WebGL platform selected, both of these objects are disabled in the hierarchy. And so this is a really helpful tool that I've created because it allows us to quickly disable a whole bunch of objects without having to go through each of them or having to play our game. And that's really the power of editor scripts and creating custom inspectors. Now I am going to provide both the platform helper script and the platform helper editor script on our website. So make sure that you go and check those out. So from here, I'm just going to continue to populate my supported objects list with all the objects that I think should be disabled when I'm not on a mobile platform. Now one thing to note, right here in my shop, I've disabled a whole bunch of things, and now there's a bunch of blank space in my store. And so if I want my store to look better on WebGL, then I might have to go in manually and move these different objects up on the store panel. But that can be a little bit annoying when you're having to switch back and forth between your platforms. Because when I go back to mobile, I'm then going to have to re-enable all of the objects that I just disabled, and then these objects will end up overlapping each other. Now probably the best way for me to fix this would be to use some vertical and horizontal layouts to automatically set the spacing on my shop panel. And if I had more time, I would do that, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to skip over it and continue on. All right, so there we go. I believe I've added all of the objects that I want to disable for our WebGL platform. So now I'm going to click the Set Supported Objects button. And as you can see, it's disabled some of the objects in our scene. So I no longer have the Leaderboard button or the Achievement button. And all of the Rare and Legendary skins have been removed. And all the basic skins are automatically unlocked. Now all you have to do to revert it back to the way it was when you had a mobile platform selected is to switch over to the mobile platform and then click the Set Supported Objects button of the script. By doing that, the script will automatically detect that you have a mobile platform selected and it will go through this list and re-enable all of these objects. Now the next thing that you want to do from here is go through all of your scenes and make sure that you add one of these platform helper game objects to each of your scenes and then populate the supported objects list with all of the objects in each scene that should be hidden for non-mobile platforms. But for my game, there's actually nothing in any of the other scenes that need to be hidden for the other platforms. So once you've done all of this, your game should be about ready to build out to other platforms. There might just be some additional work that you need to do within your own project that these general tips and tools aren't able to do for your project. But for me, I believe my game is about ready, and so I'm going to build this out to WebGL, and then I'm going to upload the build to our website. Now, one last tip with the platform helper game object is before you build your project, if you want to, you can disable this game object within your scene, because it doesn't really do anything for you to have it enabled. And then when you need to use it again, you can just re-enable it. And so I'm now going to build my project. All right, so here we go. I was able to successfully build my project for WebGL, and I was able to upload it to our website. Now, I was able to establish a connection and start a game between my WebGL build and my mobile devices, which was really cool, but for some reason, as soon as I picked up a food with the WebGL build, the camera immediately stopped following the rotation of my snake around the cube, but there weren't any runtime errors occurring. And so it might be that there's a segment of code that I need to have that I accidentally added to my if region for mobile platforms. But this will take me more time to figure out. And so for now, I just did away with all of the multiplayer features for the WebGL platform, which is okay because now it's more like a light version for our website. And so people will be able to come to our website and play a demo version of our Snake Cube game. And then they'll immediately be able to go over to Android and iOS and download it onto their phones where all of the features are enabled. And that's everything that we're gonna cover in this lesson on how to adapt your mobile platform Unity projects to any other platform, whether it's it's PC and Mac or WebGL. Now just a reminder, you can get both the platform helper script and the platform helper editor script from our website, and I've left a link to those in the description below. Finally, make sure that you like this video and share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel so you can be up to date on all our latest videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.